Hi everyone, it's Jack Bolton in a video. Today I'm going to be talking about Alibaba. Haven't done a video on this company in a while. Some really interesting developments to the start recently. Since it's low in March of this year, which is around $70, it's bounced straight back up another 58% to 120 Nowhere near where it once was, in well over $200. But this is now back to a respectable market cap again, $330. And if you'd have bought near, near the lows, you're looking at a decent return of above 50% here. I want to establish if this company's gross prospects are still good, if it's still a decent value at these prices, even after leaping 58%, and how this company looks balance sheet wise, profitability wise, just generally, is this an investable company? Looking at the most recent financial results we have for Alibaba, which is the three months ending March 31st, 2022, the quarterly results on a year-over-year -year basis just for the quarter were not overly impressive. China commerce, which is the majority of the business, up only 8%. International commerce revenue up 7%. And cloud, which is one of the other segments I'm most interested in, up only 12%. These numbers in isolation are not very impressive, but you've got to remember this is on the backdrop of a of wider economic decline, inflation at highs, local lockdowns in China have been happening intermittently during this time. This is a very tough environment for a business to grow. And it's still doing so at a reasonable rate, not a growing ridiculously for the, for the price Alibaba has been recently this is okay in my opinion on the full year basis these numbers were much more impressive even accounting for the the dilution of these numbers essentially by weak results this quarter 18% China commerce revenue that's 70% of the business at the sort of scale we're talking that is very very impressive international commerce up 25% which is a key growth drive for this company they will increasingly need to expand the presence outside of China because their monthly monthly users in China is absolutely enormous and near saturation so they really need to improve those international users which is a key key business growth for this for this company and that's upset that's seven percent of the business up 25 percent, which is very impressive and cloud is up 23 percent, which is nine percent of the total revenue and again another key growth drive for this company which in the future will be a big big growth engine one of the things that impressed me most about this company is the continued sustained user interaction and user growth it now has over 950 million monthly mobile as users. This graph is the best I could find, but it's from the Investor Day presentation from digital numbers for September 2021. But it now has over 950 million mobile monthly active users. So these are people going to one of Alibaba's mobile apps during that month. And 863 million annual active customers, meaning a customer that is buying one or, one or more products over the course of the year 863 million this sort of scale is really almost hard to get your head around for an e-commerce company far far and away above all of its peers this is incredible and while it's not experiencing the growth that pinjojo or jd.com are has many many arms many strings to its bow should we say many business arms that are potential areas for growth other than just e-commerce Looking at some balance sheet and profitability metrics, some of the numbers are depressed to what they would normally be because we're in a tough environment. Still consistently profitable, consistently free cash flow positive, but it's a tough environment. We're in an inflationary environment, possibly trending towards a global recession, and there's a supply chain crunch. Alibaba is a very supply chain intensive business, so of course it's going to be feeling the pinch. From a balance sheet point of view, cash set of 3.22. Pretty strong for the industry. Not the strongest it's ever been for Alibaba. They're having to expend some cash to to go about normal operations. So it's not, not the end of the world. A 3.22 cash debt is decent. I would, of course, like this to be higher. You would, of course, like a company to have no debt and tons of cash. But that is cannot always be the case. 3.22 cash debt is more than good enough. EBITDA is depressed, so the interest coverage looks a bit ridiculous here. But overall, this is a company with very low debt. Not over overly concerned about it at all I think the balance sheet is thoroughly decent Altman score indicates this 3.34 I think this is a bit harsh Alibaba has a decent balance sheet in what is a year of depressed EBIT down depressed profitability so I'm not concerned about its potential financial distress anywhere in the near future not to mention an Ant Group IPO could generate a lot of cash for this company from a profitability standpoint, these profitability metrics are all greatly depressed based because of factors that I've mentioned, inflationary environment, trend towards a recession, supply chain crunch, increased wages, blah, blah, blah. Gross margin 36.7% is decent for e-commerce, not amazing, pretty weak for Alibaba's history. This trend's normally above 40%. Operating margin of 11% is, again, pretty strong for the industry, but pretty weak for Alibaba's, Alibaba, by Alibaba's metrics. So... Profitability standpoint, 
these are decent. A net margin of 6.4 for an e-commerce company is, is okay. This is a company that does an absolutely enormous amount of revenue, so that net margin can get high really The actual dollar amount can get high really quickly, but this is not an impressive gross margin by any means, and we would like this to be a lot higher, and it has been close to 10 in by historical comparisons. I think it will return to this in the not-too-distant future once we get out of the current the current economic situation, but Alibaba is handling this fairly well and is still consistently impossible, which I'm impressed with. From a valuation point of view, these are not obviously not the cheapest metrics you'll ever see for Alibaba because it was $78 stock and it's now $120 stock, but these metrics are all still quite cheap. A forward price to earnings of 13 far below the S&P 500 average still, which is around 15 or 16. It's a decent valuation. I believe this company is better than the average S&P 500 company, typically growing at 20% a year with decent margins and a lot of room for growth. That is far above average, and I think a P of 13 is far too low for this company. Looking at the price of free cash flow under 15, I typically like this to be under 20. This is a very good value for Alibaba's history, not to mention that free cash flow is depressed this year. Price to operating cash flow about the same. So again, these are both depressed to where this would normally be. I'm quite happy to be paying, paying these sort of forward multiples for Alibaba. However, this isn't the full story. Before we get into the DCF, my overall thoughts. One interesting thing I noticed was that while I don't tend to pay too much attention to, to individual analysts, it is nice to see that the broader market is trending to, away from any sell or underweight or even holds, and the broader analyst consensus is moving towards Alibaba at a buy with price targets close to $200, which is far above where it is now. It seems like the tide is turning. They believe that the, Ch the Ch Chinese regulation problems are nowhere near as harsh as they would be. They believe that the delist delistment fears were widely overdone. I think they just believe this company is oversold and has good potential and there are what there are bigger problems on the horizon than the problems that Alibaba has. This company that is managing the supply chain crunch fairly well and looks like a decent buy at these prices. Next, discounted cash flow analysis, working out an intrinsic valuation based on the sum of future cash flows and then a fair value. For this, I'm using what I think is a relatively conservative estimate, in fact, a very conservative estimate of 8% free cash flow growth for the next 10 years. It has averaged over the last 10 years, 33.7% free cash flow growth and over the last five years, 18.9% free cash flow growth. That is with a 21% decline this year for obvious, for obvious reasons that I've spoke about throughout the video. In addition to 8% is far below this, but in addition to this, it has grew revenue of 43% over the last 10 years and over the last five years, 39.7%. And even now, it grew 23%. I think there's a lot of challenges this year, which are, were obvious and I've mentioned throughout the video, why free cash flow is lowered. I think it'll bounce back in the near future. And I think 8% is a relatively conservative number. I think, especially with the cloud coming forward, this should be a cash generating machine. If if cloud works out how it has, there's a predicted compound annual growth rate for the next five years, something like over 30%. So I think this definitely subsidized the free cash flow of this company significantly. So I think 8% is a relatively conservative number, using a discount rate of 9% for the long term returns of the stock market and a terminal stage growth rate of 4%. This gave a fair value of $135 compared to a stock price today of $123. Like I said, I think this is a relatively conservative estimate. You think they've got the free cash flow growth rate is perhaps 12% or 15%, then this is an enormous discount to fair value right now. I'm using a relatively conservative estimate. So that gives an essentially fair value company with maybe 10% upside from here. And I think that is more than a good price. There's many reasons to be bearish about Alibaba for the last year or two. I think some of the price decline was justified. This obviously went way too far. It's up 58% in the last three months or so. I think there's more more growth to be had. I think there's an excellent company that's going to continue to be a titan of its industry. I think the cloud segment and the international commerce segments are going to drive this company to well over a trillion dollars over the long term. And I think it's a fantastic business trading at a relatively low valuation, both on a intrinsic valuation and on a fundamental traditional valuation metrics basis i think this could easily continue to provide good good compound annual growth rates for long-term investors for the next 10 15 even 20 years if the cloud business pans out as i hope it will of course with that being said i'm an alibaba shareholder so that should factor in on maybe i'm biased maybe i'm not whatever you think let me know in the comments below and of course i'm not a financial advisor so you should do your own research due diligence don't just buy it because i think it's a good a good business and i own it let me know what you think in the comments like and subscribe if you enjoying the videos of course i'll see you again next time